everyone. I'd like to start by introducing Steve Brawl. Good morning. Well, good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's a beautiful day. Let's, let's hope it stays that way. <laughs> Um, I'm happy to announce, and I've said this a couple of times now, but I'll, I'll say it yet again, VWC safety consultants, ergonomists, and industrial hygienists are back in the field. So if you need some assistance with any of your health and safety concerns, feel free to give us a call and we can schedule those on-site consultations again. Um, some exciting news for the schools out there. We have a, the school safety and security grant has been expanded to help cover the cost of improvements to heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems. Additional funding of $15,000 is available to any qualifying entity under the School Safety and Security Grant Program to cover the cost of inspections, assessments, maintenance, and improvements to HVAC systems and to purchase uh, other secondary devices to control the spread of airborne contaminants, including viruses, uh, for eligible applicants. Uh, you can visit ohiobwc.com for more information on the School Safety and Security Grant HVAC. I have a couple distance learning opportunities yet this month for BWC. We have one webinar coming up later this month on April 21st. We have reducing amputation hazards. If you have machine guarding issues, that would be an excellent class to attend. And we have that's actually a webinar. It's one hour webinar on the 21st. And then we have three classes yet in our training center offered virtually yet this month. So on April 19th, personal protective equipment and selection criteria. On April 20th, we have work zone traffic safety control. And then we're going to finish the, the uh, month on April 27th to 28th. This is a class that runs both days, crane rigging and signal person duties. So if you're interested in any of the virtual training classes, or the webinars, please visit bwclearningcenter.com to register. Our speaker this morning is Connie Fries. Connie started her career as a registered sanitarian over 25 years ago with Public Health Dayton in Montgomery County, and is currently a registered environmental health specialist supervisor. She started with her bachelor's degree in environmental health from Wright State University, and then later went back working full time to receive her master's of public health. While her passion and focus has been on the food safety and inspections, she is also responsible for programs of public swimming pools, transient accommodations, school buildings, campgrounds, and institutions. She imparts her knowledge and expertise by training the next generation of environmental health specialists, as well as teaching food safety person in charge certification courses. She is a member of the Ohio Environmental Health Association, the International Association for Food P Protection, and was on the executive board of the Ohio Association for Food Protection. She also dedicated her last, also her work time over the last two years to help with COVID-19 activities, including vaccination locations, COVID sampling collections, and COVID compliance inspections. So please join me in welcoming Connie Fries. Thank you. Um, today, what I was gonna talk to you about is environmental health and how, um, Environmental health saves lives through protection and prevention. Public health, Dayton and Montgomery County, and our mission is to improve the quality of life in our community by achieving the goals of public health, prevention, promotion, and protection. We get asked this question frequently, what is environmental health? Environmental health is the science and practice of preventing human injury and illness and promoting well-being by identifying and evaluating environmental sources and hazardous agents and limiting exposures to hazardous physical, chemical, and biological agents in air, water, soil, food, and other environmental media or settings that may adversely affect human health. So within Public Health Dayton in Montgomery County, we have the Office of Environmental Health. It's one of many offices. We have in that office, we have a Bureau of Air Pollution, which pe people might know it as RAPCA, Regional Air Pollution Control Agency. We have the Bureau of General Services, which is what I'm a part of, and then also the Bureau of Special Services. So th these are the three bureaus that I'm going to talk to you about today. Regional Air Pollution and Control Agency, RAPCA. This is the area, and it's not just in Montgomery County. It actually serves five counties. It serves Clark County, Dark, Green, Miami, Montgomery, and Preble counties. 
and enforces state and local air pollution laws and regulations. It has air quality monitoring, air pollution forecasting, pollen and mold reports. So they compile the reports that you see on the news media regarding pollen and any mold. They do facility inspections looking for the air pollution and monitoring those facilities for air pollution. They do industrial permits. They do complaint inspections. They also regulate asbestos removal during building renovations and demolitions. So any building renovations or demolitions, they look for the asbestos uh, removal from those buildings, especially the older buildings. If you have any questions on anything with RAPCA, the website that I have here is where you can go to look for more information. It's www.rapca.org. So in our Bureau of Special Services, they also enforce state local laws and regulations. We look at our rabies and nuisance programs. We have a well field program, well field protection program. We have a solid and infectious waste program a water and sewage program, a lead program, plumbing inspections, and mosquito and vector control program. Okay. Our water source protection program is our well field protection. This is the aquifer. You'll see on here there's two outlined areas in red. This is the aquifer that Montgomery County's water supply comes from. This program monitors the amount of chemicals that businesses have that are located over this aquifer. So the two outlined areas in red are the aquifer that Montgomery County's water supply actually comes from. We want to watch how much chemicals are actually stored over this area to limit any accidents that will happen of any hazardous chemicals actually getting accidentally going into the water supply, somehow making its way into the water supply. I believe back in 1987, there was an incident of a fire that happened in a building, one of the businesses that actually had a fire, that when the fire happened, they couldn't put out the fire because of the risk to the aquifer of the chemicals that were on the property, somehow leaching its way back into the aquifer. So they had to let the business burn rather than put the fire out because of the aquifers. So we also have a rabies and vector mosquito control. Rabies is a virus that affects the central nervous system. All it takes is a break in the skin for the virus to enter the skin. It doesn't take a bite, it just takes a break in the skin. There's no cure for rabies once the infection takes a hold. So if a human has been exposed, they must start a series of post-exposure rabies shots. Once the infection has reached the brain, there is no treatment and rabies is still fatal. So we still take rabies seriously. Any mammal can carry the rabies virus, but small mammals such as mice, chipmunks, and squirrels and rabbits are not likely to carry the virus. Some ways to combat the rabies virus is to vaccinate all pets. And if you find any wildlife that looks like it's been injured or it looks sick, contact the county's Department of Natural Resources officer. Rather than try and help the animal yourself, contact them so if they, that way you, you limit your exposure to being bit or scratched. So for mosquitoes, mosquitoes can reproduce in any standing water, such as swimming pools, any stagnant water, standing water, swimming pools, so if you have a backyard pool or a pool that is not going to be used for the summer. Clogged gutters, a plant that has the water standing at the base of the plant, and any used tires, anywhere you see standing water. Mosquitoes, along with being a nuisance, can also transmit diseases. We do trappings throughout the summertime. Looking for West Nile virus is part of the trappings for the summer. If we find West Nile virus, we will also do foggings and sprayings only if we find West Nile virus. We also do solid and infectious waste program. As you can see here on these pictures, the landfills. We have one landfill in the county and our landfills are starting to fill up. They are becoming the highest points in parts of the county and the highest parts of the country. Recycling is important. Recycle whenever possible. Um, dispose of waste properly when recycling if recycling is not an option. 
don't litter. It's a crime that impacts everybody. If you have tires or use tires and you need to dispose of tires, dispose of them properly. And you can also contact, if you do have tires, residents of Montgomery County can dispose of up to 10 tires for free at the Montgomery County Solid Waste and Recycling Facility at 1001 Encrete Lane in Dayton. Only thing I caution and extreme caution is do not haul more than 10 tires at a time. If you do, it's a felony if you don't have a permit to do this. So be aware of that. Again, extreme caution. Don't, do not transport more than 10 tires at a time because it is a felony to transport more than 10 tires. We also have a water and sewage program. We have a private sewage and private water. This is not the public water and public sewage. That would actually fall under EPA. So private water and private sewer. So this is for somebody's home. So for well water, well water should be tested whenever a change is noticed in either the flavor of the water or the smell of the water. For routine monitoring, test for nitrates and coliform bacteria. The septic tank additives are wanting to be used. While they do not cause harm to the system, they're usually not beneficial to the system functioning. If you see sewage bubbling out of the ground, consult a professional to determine whether the correction will involve a simple repair, an alteration, or replacement of the system. All household sewage contractors must be registered with public health to perform work in Montgomery County. Permits are needed to install both private water and sewage systems. Childhood lead poisoning prevention. Lead poisoning is invisible. Not all children get tested for lead. If a child is on Medicaid, they must be tested for elevated blood lead levels. They have to be tested year one and year two of age and up to year six of age if no previous test was done and if they have the following conditions apply. If a child lives in a home or is regularly visits a home or a facility built before 1950, if a child is regularly visits a home or is in a facility or in a school built before 1978 that has deteriorated paint, if a child lives in a home or regularly visits a home built before 1978 with recent ongoing or planned renovation remodeling, if a child or a sibling or a playmate has or did have lead poisoning, if a child has frequent contact with an adult who has lead-related hobby or occupation, if a child lives near an active former lead smelter, battery, recycling plant, or other industry known to generate airborne lead dust, they're required to actually have lead testing done. Plumbing inspections. We also do plumbing inspections for certain parts of the county. Not all plumbing inspections will be done by Public Health Dayton in Montgomery County. There are other jurisdictions that do plumbing inspections, so you ha would have to consult your city or your townships to find out if they do their own. Before you hire a plumber, make sure that they have registrations with the city or with the township or with public health. So before any work should be done by any plumber, verify that they are registered and then permits are needed for any remodeling of bathrooms and kitchens as well as any replacement of water heaters or water softener appliances. So Bureau of General Services, this is the section that I'm actually involved with, is Bureau of General Services. We enforce state and local laws and regulations as well. We do inspections of the programs of food services operations, retail food establishments, public swimming pools, school buildings, campgrounds, recreational vehicle park camps, transient accommodations and hotels and motels, institutions, tattoo and body art, and smoke-free workplace. Inspections of food service and retail food establishments. This is our restaurants and grocery stores. This is where we inspect restaurants and grocery stores. Main thing that we're looking for in restaurants and grocery stores is compliance of temperatures. Temperatures are pretty much the biggest thing that we're looking for. If our hot foods hot? Are cold foods cold? Are they cooking foods correctly? Are they cooling foods down? Are they making sure that the food is being thawed correctly? Are they washing their hands? Are they making sure foods are not being cross-contaminated? These are the biggest things that they're doing 
This is the things that are going to cause a foodborne outbreak if they're not complying with these things. These, this is what we're really looking for. Some of the issues that we'll find in restaurants is making sure foods are coming from an approved source. All food that they're providing in restaurants have to come from a source that has been inspected. All food has to come from an inspected, meaning either federally, state, or locally inspected facilities. What you're seeing here is somebody who made food at home, brought it in, and was going to provide this food to the public for them to consume. This is a jar of, I think, sauerkraut that they made at home, and we're going to put it on people's food for people to eat, and they cannot do this. So what this is here, any equipment that they have, that they provide inside the restaurant, has to actually be smooth, easily cleanable, and non-absorbent, and approved for use inside the kitchen. This is a broom handle, that they cut off the end of the broom handle, they took pieces of metal, and put the metal inside the handle end. What they were using this for was to take chicken that was wet, damp, and floured, taking little pieces of chicken and putting it in fryer oil, little pieces off. So this equipment's not cleanable. It's not supposed to be used for what it was being used for. People get creative out there. We, we applaud creativity. We really applaud creativity. We don't applaud creativity for use inside of a kitchen that's for commercial usage. They can use this at home, but they can't use this in a commercial kitchen. So this was, was, this was removed from use in the kitchen. Another piece of equipment that we found also in use in the kitchen is this board that was used. It's, this was being used as a meat tenderizer. It's a piece of treated lumber. And treated lumber, if you don't know what treated lumber is, it's the wood that you make your deck out of in your backyard. It's you treat it with things to keep it from growing anything on it. So it's insecticides and metals and fungicides and pesticides. So each time you would take this thing, you were possibly contaminating your food items with. So again, this person did not think what they were doing with it. They were just creative, very creative. But no, they could not use this. So this also got pulled. When we go into facilities, we look to see what has changed in this operation. What have they were approved to do? We went into this operation. This operation was a part of a grocery store. This is a meat cutting room. So they only were designed to actually cut meat. We went in. We're finding a home backyard type of outdoor propane tank with a fryer unit that they were frying food in. Again, there was no cooking supposed to be done in this facility. So they had unapproved equipment in this establishment frying food, and they weren't supposed to be doing this. This was a joint inspection with the local fire inspector. So this had to be removed. So we were lucky no fire was created from this establishment at this time. But this is one of the things that we go looking for is what has changed, what has moved, what is no longer a safety hazard looking for these things. So the kitchen was not approved to cook, and the equipment was not designed for use inside the building. And it was removed from the building. We also investigate fires and structural damage to buildings. Um, we have fires happen. There was no fire from that previous slide. This is a different fire, but we also have to investigate fires. After a fire happens to a building, or we have had a lot of instances where cars have gone through buildings, and if a car goes through a building, we have to investigate to make sure what happened to the food, discard the food, um, if the food needs to be discarded, if it's been contaminated, did they lose power, did they lose what happened um, to the facility, did they need to repair anything, do they need to shut down, what do they need to do? We have to then deal with the operation and take care of the operation. We also inspect swimming pools. And as you can see in this facility, you can't see the bottom of the pool. Biggest things in a swimming pool program that we look at, we look at the chemicals, water chemistry of the pool. Is there chlorine and pH? Are they balanced? Are they optim at optimal levels? Um, we look to see, can we see the main drain? If it's cloudy, there's something wrong with the pool. We look at the safety equipment that's on the deck. 
we look at public pools only. We do not do private pools. For us, a private pool is somebody's backyard pool. A public pool is a pool that is a condo, an apartment, a hotel, a city pool, a country club. Those are all considered public pools. We also inspect school buildings. And school buildings for us, whether they're private or public, it's all kindergarten through 12th grade that have to be inspected. To check for just health and safety standards for inside the school buildings. As you can see, this one, this one comes into a little bit of a concern of too much stuff in the hallway. It's not an easy egress if there were to be a concern of easy access to get out of this building. How easy is it to get out of this building without falling over something? There's a list of stuff that we look for inside the school buildings. We also do a campground and RV park camps. So as you can see here, the biggest thing that we look for is probably sewage. That's our biggest health concern that we look for. You can see the picture on the left. There is a hose coming from one of the campers and it is what we call a sewage line, but you can see it's dumping into the grass and it just happens to dump into the tire tracks that are there right onto the ground. And that's not how it's supposed to be. It is supposed to be going into a sewage connection into the ground like the picture on the right. But there are a whole bunch of rules that people have to follow on these. We have a local county regulation for all hotels that we have to enforce and we go in to check for accommodations for any guests and anyone visiting any hotel. We also have cases that were like a hoarding case where people have started to really live in a hotel room. And as you can see the picture on the left, we get involved, especially with the fire marshals, we end up going in, that becomes a hoarding case. Roaches and bed bugs become a problem. The picture on the left toward the ceiling, you can see a whole bunch of bed bug feces up on the ceiling. So it becomes a bigger problem. And then the picture on the right is just a shower stall that was supposedly clean. And you can see it was not. We also have to do inspections inside the institutions and jails and prisons. So we do get in there to do inspections for just general sanitation and tattoo and permanent cosmetics. Back in, in 1994, we started with about less than 10 places that had tat or tattoos and permanent cosmetics licenses and we're up to over 102 this year. So the number of tattoo and permanent cosmetic licenses has increased tremendously. Biggest thing I would say is just make sure if you're going to get one, make sure that they're licensed. There's a lot of people who not necessarily get licensed. Just make sure that they are licensed before you get it. It is breaking of the skin. We also have a Smoke-Free Workplace Act. And the Smoke-Free Workplace Act is a complaint-driven program. All work environments are completely smoke-free. This has been since 2008. It is the one program that we have that is completely work environment only. Everything else that we've talked about here is focused completely on public, which is also workplace, but public. This one is strictly for workplace. So if someone's smoking outside, this one is not, that's acceptable. This one is strictly for workplace environments. But yeah, there's an 800 number that has to be posted on every workplace environment. There is a section in the regulation about patios there is an acceptable patio, but it has to meet certain requirements. The most problematic issues found in programs since COVID is illegal operations. Our number of illegal operations has gone up tremendously. The number of complaints that we've had recently of food operations operating illegally, and all of these are the general services ones that I'm going to talk about. It's Food operations have gone up. We've got people who are operating out of their homes for food and they were trying to make a living when COVID happened and they're still all trying to operate out of their homes and they can't do that. It's, it's illegal to make food from your home to sell it. And it's just the number of places that are, are up for that. Um, lack of resources, the number of staff, and I mean, any business can tell you this, the staffing is hard. 
equipment, getting equipment is hard, getting food. You've seen it on the grocery store shelves yourself. It's hard to get the food. It's hard to find these things. The chemicals, the thing I'll tell you with chemicals that we're seeing right now, you could see it in, in 2020, hand sanitizers. You couldn't find hand sanitizers on the shelf. The recalls are happening because of the chemicals. You had wood alcohol coming out that they had to recall hand sanitizers because you could die from the hand sanitizers. Well, now we're starting to see all these chemicals. You, you had a shortage of chlorine. You had a shortage of other chemicals out on the shelves. Now you've got all these other chemicals on the thing and people are mixing chemicals. I'm gonna tell everybody, it's like watch your chemicals, read your chemical labels, be very careful of your chemicals because people are starting to mix chemicals together and you're starting to see people forget high school chemistry, people forget that acids and bases shouldn't mix, that there are serious reactions to chemicals that you really have to be careful of. We've, we've already seen people responding to chemical reactions and it's, it's just very careful. It, that's what we're seeing right now is chemicals. And maintenance of facilities, people don't have money and maintenance of facilities has really gone down. They don't have the money, they'd rather spend the money paying their staff and then necessarily fixing their facilities. And we understand that to a certain degree but we also want to make sure we're protecting public health. If it ha comes down to you have to fix a refrigerator, you have to fix the refrigerator. You have to fix the things that are the most important. We get the balancing. We understand the balancing, but it's like there, it does. Maintenance of facility is big. So I think that pretty much ends my speech. <laughs> so. Um, if you have questions on any of it, I know I did an extreme fast overview of all of this. We can pretty much go, if you have questions on any of it, there's my contact information. I gave our general number in to Public Health Dayton and Montgomery. So you can kind of call that number and you can get to me or you can get to any of the, if you have questions on any of the departments, they can answer any of those questions or send you to the right people. There's a lot of information on our website, and if anyone wants anything more specific, call. We can get in, in, more specific info.